all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be taking a look at pink and how we can run it on the ultra 96 now pink is an open source project from xilinx which aims to make the embedded system design for zinc systems such as the ultra 96 much easier uh, and instead of going into the the complicated tools like vivado and um, and things like that writing your own very log code and you know managing ips and complicated stuff like that you can go ahead and exploit the benefits of programmable logic in general without having to learn uh, a whole new system like very log uh, and hdl and stuff like that so we are going to take a look at how we can run it on the ultra 96 we won't be doing much programming today just taking a look at how to run the OS itself and running a demo which it would uh, use the neural network uh, capabilities and processing uh, capabilities of the Ultra 96 again on the FPGA side of things uh, and we can see how that goes. Go to pink.io uh, and that's where you will get most of your um, stuff from and click on boards uh, and this page will turn up and here and on this page you can see there are downloadable pink images and under community boards there is the ultra 96 pink documentation and avnet uh, version 2.3 pink image uh, now you can click on it and it will start to download now i already have it downloaded uh, waste not wasting much time there so here you can see I have the image already downloaded. Now all I have to do is insert my SD card uh, into my computer. And once it's detected, I can right click and open with this image writer. You can use anything like DD command or etcher or Win32 disk image or whatever you want. This is just my way of doing things. And I can select the 16 gigabyte drive there and select start restoring so this is going to take a while and once it's done we'll be back you have finished flashing the sd card connect the sd card uh, insert the sd card in the ultra 96 connect the micro usb from the ultra 96 to your uh, laptop and also connect the power on the ultra 96 and once everything is set up go ahead and press that power button uh, give it around 15 seconds to boot up um, and it will show up on your system uh, now the way we are going to access the ultra 96 is using uh, usb ethernet over usb uh, that the ultra 96 provides from its uh, micro usb port or uh, using the uh, usb gadgets uh, thing and uh, all you need to do is navigate to this url so 192.168.3.1 uh, again you can press enter and that shows up that's the jupyter notebook that we'll be working with and and here just to take a quick look you can see if i do and uh, if config uh, you can see i have a, a second ethernet port and that says 192.3.180 that's the uh, 100 that's the ip my Ultra 96 has provided to my laptop and this is the IP the Ultra 96 is running on. So we can access using that and uh, there we are. So you just navigate to the uh, IP address. And here you can see a few uh, projects and folders. Now you, the first thing you need to do is connect to a Wi-Fi network. So you go to the common folder and here you can see there is a Wi-Fi.ipynb file click on that this will open up as kind of a documentation uh, or document and the way Jupyter works is that it has Python embedded in the documentation so you can individually run each of these snippets as a piece of code running in the same in, in the same environment so what we can do is click on run and it will highlight the first snippet and now to run this particular snippet we can click run again and you can see here that it's not idle it's busy and now again it's idle um, and then we can go to the next snippet and uh, run that 
and here you can see it's busy again because now it's waiting for our input i will enter the ssid here and also the password press enter now it's busy again and it's uh, establishing the connection so we'll wait for a few seconds and there it's it's done its stuff and we can go on to the next bit and run the ping command and you can see so that means our wi-fi is now established properly uh, so we can go back and uh, go back to the main folder and now we need a terminal so we can click on new select terminal that shows up and that's connected to our ultra 96 now to go back and uh, try out some examples and the way to do that is go to pink.io slash examples and we are going to try a binary neural network example right here we can click on that it will open up in github and this is their repository and all we have to do is select this um, pip command right there and go to our uh, command line interface um, paste that press enter and now wait for it to start installing all right so now that it is installed what we are going to do go back to home and now you can see we have a bnn folder right there click on that and we have a bunch of examples to run by uh, now of course let's go ahead take a look at one and i'll let you all explore the others so i'm going to take a look at the road signs one and again it opens in the same uh, kind of a jupyter notebook environment where there are a bunch of python um, snippets that you can run so i'm going to zoom out a little bit so more of it is easily visible but for now uh, let's run it so the first one is a simple import statement and uh, we are importing everything get ready and we are done on to the next one um, and this lists all the available classes that there are in the code we'll run that it's done and this was a quick one and now uh, we are importing all the images run that and you can see all the images appear here that are being imported we are going to launch the uh, binary neural network in hardware and it's going to kind of benchmark that so let's run that and it's done it took it 915 microseconds um, 305 picoseconds per image and um, it was running at a rate of 3278.69 images per second oh, which is a whole lot and now we're going to compare it how it runs on the software so go ahead click run it takes a while comes back uh, this takes about 12 seconds uh, and um, 2.4 seconds per image so you can see there's almost well there's more than a thousand times the performance improvement um, using the hardware or the program or the FPGA than just doing it on the ARM core and then you can go ahead and reset everything so you don't have much running in the background and once that is done that is our uh, binary neural network demo you can see that there's a huge difference while you run on uh, the PL side of things and the PS side of things so difference between FPGA versus just running it on software make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button and to keep up with our weekly update.